thank you for being with us here online. God is doing great God. things. Uh, you yeah. know, I think uh, this moment that we're in, there's great shakings taking place, but yeah. there actually some people see storms and I see opportunities. And I believe wow. God is raising up people right now that, yeah. will, that will see opportunities. Hmm. So to good. preach the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I saw your video, man. I saw you just going hard for Jesus. Praise God. Come on. Uh, amen. You know what? So why don't we just, uh, can you start us with prayer, please, if that's okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure will. Father, I thank you for, uh, I thank you for Solomon. I thank you for Canada. Amen. And Father, I just pray for fire to be released over Canada. God, I pray yes. a special of fire for evangelism, for amen. soul winning for healing. Amen. Lord, I Amen. even pray those that watch this today would be set on fire in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. For those that don't know who Wayman is, please, let's just start by, uh, tell us who you are, your ministry, what God is doing in and through yeah. you. Like who's Wayman? Wow. Well, um, I think about 15 years ago, I, uh, I was a meth addict, a drug addict, and uh, man, I heard the powerful message of the gospel, and I remember the day the preacher began to preach. Uh, it was in a homeless, a homeless facility. I was messed up. I was a homeless guy. I was, I had been in and out of trouble with police and and all that stuff, and I was a drug addict. And and uh, man, this guy, praise God for his heart came to the place and began to preach the gospel. And as he began to preach, I remember feeling the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit. And it began to touch me and I began to weep as the Holy Spirit came upon me. And I remember that day I ran back into the room where I was, uh, they were allowing me to sleep. And I got down on my knees and I said, God, if you're real, like that preacher says you're real. I said, I want to give my life to you. I don't want to continue to live like this. I want to give you my life. And uh, man, that day God spoke to me 15 years ago and it forever changed my life. Come on, come on. So good, so good. I, I need to ask you this question for the benefit of those that are watching this right now. What does it mean to live a life on fire for Jesus? Wow, wow. It's everything. I actually believe, and I know from my own personal life, I try to I try to always speak uh, from from experiencing something uh, because I believe if we don't carry it ourselves, we don't actually walk in authority in it. And mm -hmm. I want to tell you that that uh, if we're not on fire, we're not living. We're not fully living because God told me uh, last year sometime I was in prayer and I was just in worship in the night hour and I began to worship him and he said, Wayman. He said, I believe that you're one of the most beautiful things. He says, you're one of the most beautiful things on the planet to me. And I was like, how is that, God? I'm a big dude and this and that. And he says, because you're on fire, hmm. because you're on fire, because you burn like a star. You know, the Bible says those who are wise will burn like stars in the brightness wow. of the firmament. Wow. Yeah. Wow, so, so good. So good. You recently, so I, yeah, keep going. Sorry. Yeah, I just want to say that I believe what does it look like? It looks like somebody that's passionately in love with Jesus everywhere you go, every moment and and and, and just being in love with Jesus. And, and that's loving people, too, because the way we love people is it reveals the way we love God. So mm -hmm. it's constantly walking in this passionate love and burning. You know, it says in, in Song of Solomon, chapter one, I love it. It says, wet me with the kisses of your mouth. And I just believe that God desires to constantly be uh, be intrigued and be in love with us. And 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 it uh, the uh, Solomon even wrote. He says, uh, uh, he says, draw me, Lord, so that I may run with you. Draw me, O Lord. And I believe that God is drawing us as a bride in this hour, as a body of Christ, so that we may run with Him in this hour that we're in. Wow, so good. That is so good. I, I need to ask you this for, for a person who is uh, watching this, by the way, we're Facebook live and we're also on zoom here. You know, I, I who is Jesus to you women? Wow. He is, he is, 
He is he is God. He is everything. Jesus is the Messiah. You know, he is everything to us. He is creation. He created all things and all things exist through him and by him, man. And I'll tell you, if we don't have Jesus, we're not truly alive. Like Jesus is, is, is life, bro. He's truly life. Like, I mean, I never, I I never had life until I had Jesus. And that's why I believe Jesus is the greatest thing in the earth. I believe in, in all of creation and all of the planet. Like he is the best thing. He, he is my joy. He is my love. He is, he is everything. He's everything to us, bro. So good. So good. You know, right now we're all going through a, uh, a, we're in a pandemic right now and many people have lost, uh, businesses, you know, people are going through, people are going through depression. People are hurting. Yeah. You know, what do you say to a person right now who you know, they, they love Jesus. Yeah. Feeling very discouraged right now with the things going on in the world. Yeah. I would tell you, if that's you today, I would tell you not to look at your situation. I would tell you not to look at the storm, not to look at the shaking, not to feel the turbulence and the pressures of this hour, because that's what the enemy wants. The the enemy wants for us to look at the turbulence, to look at the shakings. Like when Jesus was in the boat asleep, right? And all the, uh, the apostles, the disciples were in there with Jesus. They began to look at the storms and the waves and, 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 the, and the thundering and everything else. That's much of what's going on right now. It's just like when David took the food down to feed his brothers at the battle. All the great warriors of that moment, of that hour, were down in that valley, and and Goliath was mocking them day and night. He was mocking them, and they were they were they were crippled and arrested with fear. The greatest leaders of Israel, the greatest warriors in that moment, were gripped with fear. God, I believe, right now is raising up Davids. He's raising up Rahabs. He's raising up raising up Esthers just like that in this hour that will not look at the fear, but that they will keep their eyes on Jesus and they will move by faith and God will open many things up for them. Wow. I need to ask you this question. You know, people may be watching right now. They might be saying, okay, it's so easy for Wayman to, 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 to he's, on, he's on fire for Jesus. It's so easy for him or for me, right? A question, is everyone called to share your faith or are some called to share your faith? No, I believe, I believe if there's no, Jesus gave us a great commission. Yeah. And, and I, I'll, I'll take this from Andy Bird. He's a leader at YWAM. He said this uh, not too long ago. He said, if there is no great, if there is no great commission, if, then there is no mission for the church. Wow. Like, like our sole purpose is number one, to love God, to love him with all our hearts, all our minds and all our souls, man. Number two, man, our, 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 is to love our neighbor. And the greatest thing that we can do, you know, I just went to Honduras. People are literally starving there. And we were by, by, by the grace of God, we were able to, to, uh, hand out food as we did these crusades there. Um, But God spoke to me and he told me the greatest food is the gospel because, you know, in a couple days that food's gone. Right. But but the food, the real food, the real food is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus said, he says, all who are thirsty, come, come and drink. And he said, anybody that drinks of me, drinks of this will never thirst again. Jesus stood up and he said, I am the bread of life. You know, Jesus is life. So I, I just want to say that, that uh, yeah, the hour that we're living in, uh, you know, I faced trials just 16 months ago. My own wife was was killed in a car accident, you know, and um, man, it was uh, it was a moment. I knew my destiny. I knew my future stood before me in the moment when the policeman came to my house and he sat me down and he told me, he said, Wayman, hey, I just pronounced your wife. She died. Uh, it was unfortunate, and uh, man, I know that morning, me and my wife were in the presence of God together, reading the Song of Solomon together, worshiping together. We had no idea that evening, that night, that very night would be the last time I would see her. You know, and Jesus said that many of us, He says, He says that the storms of life will come, guys. 
The reality is we're facing a pandemic. You know, the world has faced other pandemics. They faced diseases in the past. The church has even faced mighty persecution in the past, in the days of Nero and, and, in, and in many other parts of the world right now, people are being killed and persecuted for the gospel's sake. Uh, but I believe that we're in a moment where I believe Jesus is coming. You know, I don't know the day or the hour, but I want to say that this is our moment. This is our season. Like wherever you are today, I just want to say that you have one life to live. We, you, Solomon, Wayman Dotson only has one life to live. And the Bible is very clear. Just like my wife, we were in worship that morning. We had no idea that the end of that day was going to end up the way it was, you know, and, and a truck driver ran through a red light. He must've fell asleep or something. And he ran through a red light and he hit her. My children were in the car and my, my wife was instantly killed. She went straight up, went to Jesus. Uh, my life was forever changed in that moment. But I knew in that moment, just like many people that may be watching this and may watch this later on down the road, um, many of us face those moments, are facing those moments right now. Some people are facing moments right now. And you have a choice. Each one of us has a choice. And I'm here to testify today that you can go through anything and keep the fire of God. You can wow. go through anything and stay passionate with Jesus. Man, it was two days into that. My daughter was in a coma and God led me to preach to hundreds of doctors down in, in, in the lunchroom as, as people were eating and, and nurses and, and, and ER people were down there. The spirit of the Lord came upon me and, and it was through this incident that I began to gain this boldness of this heavenly reality. Uh, you know, I know that my wife is with Jesus, right? But I know that I have work to do and I know that I only have a short time to do it. And, you know, Jesus said, um, what well, says in the book of Proverbs, excuse me, it says, he who wins souls is wise. And I want to encourage you in this hour, like, like we're all called, man, if I'm in love and, and, you know, I love, I love my wife. And man, I remember when I first met her and all throughout our marriage, I told people about my wife everywhere I go. Nobody had to ask me or had to tell me, I need to tell people about my wife. You know, if there's a great restaurant or if I have great Nikes or shoes, I love Adidas's. Nobody has to tell me that I need to tell others about them. I like to wear them. I like to show them off. You know, if you have a favorite outfit. So I don't know if the question should be sh like, should we have to tell people about Jesus? I think the issue is love. Like if I'm in love with Jesus, he's going to radiate out of me. You know, yeah. you can't drive a minute in the car with me without me telling some something about Jesus because he I'm in love with him. My whole life is focused on him. So, yeah. Wow. So sorry for your loss. Thank you for sharing such a personal story. You know, how was it for you to move on from that event to still being on fire for Jesus? Cause I've seen your videos of you going to a restaurant airport yeah. and a plane just talking about jesus how were you able to keep the fire going to this point yeah i think uh you know god showed me that i had to establish uh every morning and every night um yeah. even i remember being in the hospital uh you know many 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 nights being in the hospital going down in their their little prayer room they had and I would just 430 in the morning, I'm just down there praying, you know, I'm seeking God for 36 days straight. I remember, I don't even know how it was possible, but it was, I wept for 36 days straight and I would just be weeping, but I had a joy in me. I, I, I was going to determine, I remember my elbows hurt so bad because I just, I would, I would hold my fist up to God. And I said, God, I seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and all things will be added unto me. And, uh, you know, I, I just uh, kept doing that every day and all the time, constantly just seeking God. And, and uh, I would ask God to heal my heart, uh, you know, and, and now I have this boldness, you know, like, I mean, two days after the incident, I'm at the hospital, uh, you know, preaching the gospel. And, and I don't, this, there is a, uh, the Holy Spirit is all I can say is, is that I've maintained, I want to encourage everybody in this hour, like, like 
to maintain the fire of God. I believe that's one key thing that God is doing in the earth right now with the body of Christ. He's trying to teach us how to maintain the fire of God. It's just like all the way in the Old Testament when they carried the tents, when they carried the ark, they even to the temple. They had to keep the fire burning inside the temple. They had to keep the candles on fire. You know, had to fill them with oil. Just like Jesus says in the last days that there'll be there'll be two uh, five wise brides and and five unwise, right? And uh, he says as one will. One will be uh, filled with oil and burning, and one will be burning for a little bit, and they'll they'll begin they run out of oil. And so uh, I truly believe. How do we stay on fire? It's by reading the Word of God every day, literally. And people say, "Well, don't don't be religious." No, I'm telling you, if you read the Word of God, and if you pray and worship, do that every day. I do it every day and every morning. Now, every morning, and every night, even if I'm traveling, I do it. You know, and so I just want to encourage, and it's not a, a, a out of religion for me. It's out of love, man. I love to spend time with God, you know. And I saw, you know, even Eric this morning on your on your thing. I was watching this morning and, and early this morning and how he was talking about being in love with Jesus, you know, and, and, and that, that is the key. That is the key to keeping the fire burning is staying in love and recognizing when you've fallen out of love, you know, it says that in Revelation chapter two, he says, think about where you have fallen from. Think about where you have fallen from and repent and turn back to your first love, or I'm going to take your candle uh, stick away from you. And he's saying he's going to take his, the influence away, you know, because if you put a candle up on a, on a, on a, on a stick up on a podium, it, it shines and brightens the whole room. And so, man, I, I just want to encourage people that are out there tonight, that wherever you are in Canada, uh, America, wherever you're at, man, Jesus is the best thing on, in the world. Oh. <laughs> All right. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I recently saw that uh, you have a, a TV show, Living a Life on Fire. Can you tell us a bit yeah. about the, the, the show? Yeah. So it's incredible, man. I was uh, like, matter of fact, as you said, Daniel, I met Daniel in Brazil, uh, Daniel. And uh, we just, we liked each other. I liked him. I, I hope, I know that he likes me. I'm not going to say. Daniel hey, Kalenda, me. you mean, right? Yeah, Daniel Kalenda. And okay. uh yeah, we met down there and then, you know, uh, he invited me to come speak on his show. And, uh, and I remember being on his show and seeing, you know, like all the people that were watching and I was like, wow, God, I was like, I was in there sitting in a, in a sofa waiting for him to call me up. And I was like, God, I just pray that one day I could actually do this, you know? And, uh, and I, and he gave me, he, you know, he opened the door for me to be able to speak on his show and, and it was an awesome time. It was a blessing. I, and that's how you heard of me. And, and uh, um, I was I just basically told the testimony of what happened with my wife. And, and uh, you know, um, and so but three weeks after I left, um, I'm on the phone with a guy. And next thing you know, I'm on the phone with God TV and the doors open right before me. And so um, I just want to, yeah, and the show is called Life on Fire. It's about us going everywhere we go. We like airplanes, airports, like episodes are about us on airplanes, on, on, on commercial airplanes, on the airplanes, preaching the gospel. Uh, it's about us being in airports uh, all around the world, preaching the gospel, literally in uh, all over the airports, restaurants. Uh, we go to restaurants and and preach the gospel. Yeah, uh, just a couple of days ago, I was in Houston. I, I flew into Houston, and uh, man, there were ton, hundreds of people there, and 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 we just began to shake the whole airport up. So I, I know that God is raising up because I know that I'm not the only one that's doing it. God is releasing a boldness upon the church, and 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 we do it out of love and compassion, like like we want to reach people. And I believe that God is is trying to show us it's not just about stages. It's about living a life on fire everywhere we go. Wow. 
So good, so good. I remember watching uh, you on uh, CFAN with Dana Kalenda. Yeah. I remember how much I was like, you know, I was just really touched by you sharing your story and then sharing the gospel. I was like, wow, God, this guy is burning for Jesus. Yeah. For so people watching Facebook Live or <clears throat> on this Zoom call, they're wondering, what is this gospel we've been talking about? Or yeah. we are so passionate about. Can you just help us understand the gospel yeah. in the way you understand it? Yeah. So I will tell you, uh, that literally changed for me. It changes. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. A lot of it changes all the time. Not that, not the core of the gospel of Jesus, but I, I feel constantly that I'm seeing more of Jesus, that I'm more of Jesus is being revealed to me. And, and, uh, as I peer at him, the Bible says, as we look into the perfect law of Liberty, we began to see who Jesus is. And then when we see Jesus, we see who we are, you know, like, like Christ is the image of the invisible God. And I want to say today, when we see Jesus, you see who you are. That's Jesus is a reflection of the father and Jesus actually came to reveal who we are. You know, the Bible says to those he foreknew, God foreknew us. He, ha he had already known us. He, it says to those he foreknew, he predestined, he predetermined us to be conformed, you and I, into the image of his son. And, and just two years, uh, two and a half, three years ago, I came into this revelation. I, you know, I'd been a pastor and all this stuff. And I, uh, I would really try to do good. I would try to, to, uh, to, to do right, to live a righteous life. But along the way, I would slip up and fall. There were falls to pornography. There were falls to anger, a lot of outburst. I would say things. I would get mad. I would say things, unfortunately, to my wife. And I would, I would just be mean at times, you know, and, and, it was, I was still enslaved to sin, Solomon, you know, and, and as much as I tried, it was still had a grip on me and, and I would do good for a long time, but then I would fall to it. And then I would go into depression or discouragement. And so I want to say this today, that the gospel that I now know, the good news that I now know, that I now live and it lives inside of me, I am free from sin. You know, Romans chapter six says that we are no longer slaves to sin, but that we are slaves to righteousness. And I didn't have that revelation until about, about three years ago, but it can completely change my life because many times I wanted to always witness, but I had conviction or I had shame upon my life because of, of something I did or said earlier in the day or, or uh, some, something I looked at or, or whatever it was. There was always this shame that was trying to hinder or cripple my boldness. And we're all called to walk in boldness and to be passionate and to be on fire and to be in love with Jesus. But the only way to do that is through relationship and walking out the righteousness of God. And that's in Christ Jesus. And so this revelation that God gave me was that I had to die to sin. Wayman had to die. I had to truly die and stop desiring it because uh, uh, there were days that I would do good, but then I would desire to, to for pleasure or, or whatever. But Jesus was trying to show me to die to sin and come alive to God. The Bible says that Jesus died to sin and came alive to God. And so we, just like Paul said, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ in me, the hope of glory, you know, and, and I just want to encourage anybody out there today that, that's struggling and going through, or maybe you can relate to what I'm saying is that the way to do it is is literally to ask Jesus to come alive in you. It's to die to sin and come alive, to be resurrected in the new man, to be renew your mind and, and to be renewed uh, by the transforming of your mind and like to focus on Jesus. But bro, Solomon, I, I'll be honest with you. That revelation of the gospel, the good news, transformed my life. It, 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 it took me to a whole new level of boldness. When I walk into airports now, I don't fear. 
I don't fear because I'm, I'm walking in righteousness in Christ. And I know the Bible says that I'm no longer a slave to sin, but I'm a slave to righteousness. And then it says, I've been created in Christ. You, Solomon, and Wayman Dodson, and all those that are watching right now, wherever you're at, you have been created. You were formed in Christ Jesus for good works, not bad works. And for a long time, Solomon, I thought that I was... I couldn't do good, but I was actually created for good, right? That is the gospel for me, man. I am free wow. today. I am free mm -hmm. from sin. And my passion is to go to nations and to release freedom, the freedom that I've been given to walk in freedom everywhere I go. And I feel that a lot of us, from what we've seen, right, we've seen people get on stages and they preach the gospel. But if we go back to the book of Acts, if we go back to, to the Bible, right? Men and women preached the gospel everywhere they went in the gospels, like in the gospels and in the book of Acts. And I believe that God is raising up men, young men, young women, even older people right now who are willing to say, God, whatever you want with me, I'll do it. And I believe that a great witness of the Holy Spirit is rising up in the bride right now, that a bold, uh, bold bride is rising up, a wise bride. Uh, and, and I even believe like uh, Proverbs 31, it talks about a wise woman building her house. I believe that's actually talking about the bride of Christ. Uh, 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 and I believe that the bride of Christ is beginning to fix her gaze on Jesus. And as we look at Jesus, we see who we are, right? We see that that we are godlike because Jesus says to those who the word came to, doesn't it say you are like gods? Like, I just want to say to those this moment in this hour, like, this is your moment. This is your time. We will never have another opportunity for this moment. And we must seize, we must discern like the sons of Issachar. We must discern the time that we're in. Yes, there's a pandemic. Yes, there's COVID-19. Yes, there's political unrest everywhere. All these different nations are unstable. Yes, there's great shakings. The Bible tells us everything that can be shaken will be shaken. That's what we're experiencing right now. And yes, there are giants in the land. But where people see giants, I see promised yeah. land. And I believe you and I, Solomon, and many others, by faith, we can enter in and take the land. There are souls that need to be saved. We need to stop looking at our own lives and look at Jesus and do what God has called us to do. Wow. We are the bride of Christ. We are kings and priests, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, bro. You and I and the others that are watching this, the bride of Christ, we were handpicked for this moment. You and I have been created for this hostile environment. See, many have come before us. Maria Woodworth Etter, uh, 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 William Seymour, and, 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 the, and, the, and the revivals that happened in, in California, and, and all the other people, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, those were great people, and they came before us. But now is our time, bro. Now is our time. Come on. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I, love, I love your fire. I love the passion. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's very contagious. Now, during this pandemic, I've heard, uh, I mean, before the pandemic, I saw statistics some time ago that many Christians don't like sharing your faith. Yeah. Now we're in a pandemic. We've seen the numbers even go down, right? Yeah. And one excuse I hear a lot is <laughs> obeying the laws of the land, right? Yeah. How do you distinguish for, for a believer? How do you, how do you encourage somebody who out of the fear of, of, of the COVID-19 or the excuse of obeying the laws of the land, as God's people, are we to yeah. obey the laws of the land or how do we walk in the spirit in spite of what's going on? I'm not Bro, sure if I understand the question. Yeah. Yeah, I totally understand it. And, uh, you yeah. know, we face it here uh, in America and some places. And, you know, I will say this, many other nations of the earth, face this right now you know it's illegal to preach the gospel 
Yeah. It's illegal to gather and to worship in certain nations of the earth right now. Right now, people are, have been killed probably today, uh, you know, uh, from from being martyred, you know, and it's illegal. But they're still sharing their faith. Many people are being locked up in China right now, being killed even for the gospel. But they're still doing it because we have been commanded to do it. We've been ordered. We've been given a prescription by God. He's saying, hey, I'm giving you a new commandment, a new prescription. And, and, and you're called to go to the nations and declare the good news, declare the year of Jubilee, that everybody's been set free, that everybody's forgiven. All you have to do is just believe. And so, uh, bro, I'm, I want to say this. You, you have to live your own life. I have to live my life. And, uh, you know, I know what the Bible says and I, I have to follow the Bible. I have to follow the word of God. Like Peter told the leaders of that day, he said, you know what? You choose whom you're going to obey, but we have to obey God rather than man. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's the hour that we're in. And I believe things are going to continue to get even crazier. I don't believe it's going to get smoother and things are going to get easier. No, I actually believe things are going to get a little more shakier. I believe things are coming that, that if we're not grounded and, 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 and seated in, in Christ, man, many people are, and I, I've even seen many people kind of fall away now. They're scared to come out of their homes, you know, and, but the Lord, we got to remember the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind, perfect love, cast out all fear, right? And so we have to choose Jesus. We have to follow Jesus. And I do believe, you know, there are days ahead, just like right now, there's people giving their lives for the gospel. I mean, I just believe us in the West, we haven't seen it so much. Now we're starting to see some some things threatening religious freedom, especially even here in America. So things are quickly changing. And uh, I, I just believe that more than ever right now, we have to rise up, bro. We have the power of the Holy Ghost. Have we forgotten we have the gift of healing? Have we forgotten that we can cast out devils and heal the sick? I mean, do we believe the Bible or not? That's the question. I mean, I believe that's the reality is you have people that are in unbelief. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of. And that's what I want to say today is that David went down in that valley that day, and many of the leaders of that day were down in that valley. Many of the great warriors and leaders of Israel were in that valley. I believe many, many great leaders in America and all throughout the world of the body of Christ are in a similar predicament right now. Fear has gripped the church just like it gripped Israel in that day. All the warriors were scared, and they weren't doing anything. And little David ran out there, and, and even Saul said, hold up, David, wait, 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 wait. David, David waited on Saul. Saul, the leader of the army, says, hey, man, Goliath is a, a seasoned warrior. You got to do it this way. Uh, and tried to put his armor on David. While the whole army, the, all the leaders were gripped with fear, uh, David tried to put on that armor, but it weighed him down. See, there's many in the religious world right now that are going to tell us how to do things, but they're not willing to do it themselves. We got to be careful. Like, I, d- I just want to say this, and I'm not putting people down. I'm just saying that there are leaders right now that are gripped with fear in the body of Christ. And, and, but right now, it's opening doors and windows, opportunities for other leaders to arise. So what's happening is in this moment, Solomon, that, that new leaders are coming to the coming that are going to take over because people have sold or, or traded their voices to fear. And God is raising up a new breed, a new army, people that that are going to say, you know what, I'm going to believe God. Who is this that mocketh the the God of Israel? Like God is raising up David's little shepherd boys that have been up in the hills. Nobody knows about. 
and they're coming down and they're seeing these giants, these devils in the land, and they're going to make war with them. They're going to be like Jehu that gets anointed with oil and gets on the horse and drives to dethrone Jezebel. Like there's many mighty women of God right now, women of God too, that are rising up, that are that have never been heard of, never been known, but they're coming up. Many like yourself and others that are watching this right now, they've never been known because God is looking. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro throughout the whole world seeking for that one who will give his or her heart fully to him and it says god will show himself strong uh, through them through them those who are wise mark these words will shine like stars in this hour and they they will meet they will lead many who are unrighteous to righteousness that's the hour that we're in. There's many warriors rising up. There's many new voices emerging, coming out of the out of the shakings that have been taking place because things are shaking so strong right now. It's shaking wow. churches up. It's shaking everything up. It's shaking the government of America. It's being so shaken right now. America and all her treasure and all her splendor has been shaken like never before in this hour. And I, I believe that these shakings they, 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 it's like a, it's like a, a, a birthing nursery for mighty men and women of God, because it births people and leaders and, and revivalists, yeah. just like William Seymour, just like Martin Luther King was birthed in a hostile moment. More than mm -hmm. ever, we need, we need Martin Luther Kings more than ever. Mm -hmm. We need William Seymour's. We need leaders from all colors, all races in the body of Christ to arise in this hour. You know, young men in America, young black men, they need a, a spirit filled man of God to lead their community just like the white people and just like all these other people. And, and that's the reality is, is this moment is hungry for revivalists. This moment is starving for mighty men and women of God to say, God, I'll give you my life. Wow. That was really good. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> this is fire. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I was watching your video in uh, Honduras, just seeing yeah. the people, you preaching to the people and, and just seeing the situation. And my heart just was, I was so touched. Can you help people watching uh, this video? Uh, just help us understand what's happening in Honduras for those that don't yeah. know what's going on there. Yeah, so November the 1st, they had their first hurricane, a category four, I think, hit the first and then a week later they had a second hurricane uh category five hit honduras and uh man it hit really bad uh i was just there up till two days ago uh people are starving it wiped out whole villages it wiped out whole areas just are gone you know people are gone there's people missing they're they're finding peace people now that when the waters recede and they're finding bodies in the mud and and so that nation man has truly been shaken in this hour we're in a moment in time in that nation where man uh the food resources have been knocked out all things and man they're in desperate need for food for help for anything you can think of they are we're going back in january we're doing three uh crusades in january but we're not just going and uh, doing crusades. We're going and handing out food. I think we fed uh, over 6,000 people uh, uh, this past week, uh, but but that didn't even hardly knock a dent in it because there's hundreds of thousands of people who are homeless. They, they literally lost everything. And so, um, you know, we're just there. There's a window open. There's many. We, we saw thousands and, uh, you know, in one night we saw thousands give their life to Jesus. And we preached for five days straight all throughout Honduras. We, th we saw thousands come to Jesus, uh, you know, and, and that's the message is that in this moment wow. that, that, that you're facing trials and, and you've lost everything, you can use this moment to take you out and destroy you, or you can actually use it to start a new chapter to fully live for Jesus. Don't go back to the old life. No, jump into the new. Do what God is doing right now. Like, like forsake your old life, the old man, and, and give your life to Jesus. Because, man, many people are seeing the shakings, you know, uh, and many people are seeing. Man, I talk to people all the time 
you know, young people and, and they say, man, like I th we, a lot of people will say Jesus is coming back, you know, and these are people that are not in the church. You know, they, they, they see what's yeah. going on. People see what's going on, you know, and I believe more than ever, if you're watching this, I want to encourage you to preach the gospel everywhere you go in, in restaurants and uh, grocery stores and Walmarts or wherever you go, in Toronto, everywhere you go, in Canada, light Canada up on fire. Like, that's what changes the planet, is the word of God. The enemy's done a good job at stuffing us in these gigantic churches, with thousands of people having a good worship song. But the reality is, is what changes the planet is the word of God. And we must, we must get out and preach the gospel. Acts chapter 17. They said, who is this that has come and shaken our city upside down? Two men walk into a city and they change the whole city. They turn it upside down. Uh, the, the apostles. God is looking for young men and old men even in this hour to turn cities upside down. They said, who is this? They preach another king. They preach another king. God is looking for men and women to put the King Jesus on our lips and, and go into the nations and declare the power of the living God in this hour. Wow. Wow. So good. It's amazing because God has been speaking to me through numbers in this season as well at his word. Yeah. I saw the number of 444. I kept, I've been seeing that this season, which for me means like transition or his. Yeah perfect will be done just when you said we can allow these moments to refire us i saw my yeah. time was four 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 so god is really speaking just uh just uh, a lot of truth is coming out of you and i'm just so thankful for your life have you been to canada before or no yes i i was in canada but i was a young boy i was a young boy oh. i've never been been there since i've been a, a believer wow Wow. Well, I'm hoping you can come here eventually. I'm come really on. hoping. Come on. We we need the shaking over here. The just the fire God is, you know, what God is doing in your ministry. You know, I, I really believe that, you know, God is raising people like yourself in this hour that would do his work in powerful ways. Now, how can people support the people of uh, Honduras? Like what is is there a website, your ministry that people can yeah, give to you? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. Um, you could just go on witness to the nations It's witness to the nations dot com, or you can go on my Facebook and I have yeah. stuff probably posted in there where, um, you know, people can, can get in touch and, uh, and so into that, uh, you know, reach out to us, email us, uh, to, you know, we're, uh, we're taking teams down anybody that's interested in going and preaching the gospel and, you know, um, yeah, I just want to encourage everybody that watches this, man, that um, God created you for this moment. And like God, your identity is in Christ and not only your identity, but your purpose. Once you figure out who you are, then you then you understand your purpose. And that's what the, God wants to reveal who we are. And so that we can actually know our purpose and then we can see other people. I can't identify Solomon until I know who I am. And that's why jealousies and envies are in the body of Christ because people really don't know who they are and they don't know their purpose. But once we know who we are, once I know who Wayman is, I see Solomon in, in the, in the divine nature that God created you. And I see your purpose, you know, and I, I, I actually rejoice in that. And, and I just, yeah, pray for Honduras. Uh, pray for those nations, and uh, but I would encourage you wherever you're at, if you're watching this, God's called you for right where you are, and I want to encourage you to sound the alarm. Jesus is coming. Nice, so good. I believe there are two people on this call. We have some evangelists here. They just said to me they would like to go to Honduras with your team. Come on, so come on. For those for those who are interested in going to Honduras with your team, how can they? How can we connect this? Um, just, just email us at, um, okay. at, uh, contact, contact at witness to the nations 
or they can jump on my Facebook thing okay. and um, they can send me a message. That, that, that would probably be the easiest way. So thank Come you on. so much, Wayman. Thank you so much. Yes. I love you, my brother. I really hope we bless can bring you to Canada eventually. Hi. Amen. Thank you for your time. God bless you.